All right, guys, good morning. It is a very cold Saturday morning. We're off to vote. And then today is all gonna be about fixing all of my 3D printers. Let's get into it. All right, guys, we got the voting done and now I can finally get stuck into these printers. So starting off is the TiVo Tarantula. So you can see I've got most of the frame complete. And yeah, it's actually been going together really nicely. It's like adult Meccano. It's a 3D printer kit. It's a very low cost 3D printer kit. And it just goes together with basic tools that they give you, some Allen keys and that sort of thing. So ironically, this is gonna be the fully optioned TiVo Tarantula with dual extruders. And it's ironic because it's gonna be the cheapest machine I've put together, but also the first machine I've ever owned with a dual extruder setup, which is pretty cool. I've used dual extruder machines before, but I don't actually have one. So yeah, it's gonna be pretty cool to see what we can do with it. So yeah, as you can see, it's a uh, pretty decent kit. It's um, a little bit on the flimsy side, but that's just because there's no frame bracing for the gantry. And yeah, all the bits here going together. And we're gonna get it hopefully together in the next week and get a review up for you guys. Alrighty, so another printer I'm looking after is the Upbox, which is that one there. So, as you guys might know, I work a lot with UP and specifically 3D printing systems who distribute the UP printers around Australia. So, I help them out in Sydney when they do trade shows. Um, they're really great guys. So, this is the UP Studio software and I basically just need to make sure this UP is working. So, this is the latest software from UP and it's okay. They, they need to do a bit to improve it a little bit more, but it's, um, it's, it looks sleeker. It is now properly 64 bits, so it's a little bit faster, but there's, it's still clunky. There's no G-code preview and there's certainly no options to edit temperatures. And what I'm actually going to print is a part to fit the BPS extruder, which I've had for a very long time and haven't had time to fit, to my original WANHAL V1, the duplicator i3 V1. So this is the, the part that I've got, um, designed very kindly by Evan, who uh, I met at National Manufacturing Week, which is awesome. So he designed this up in on shape for me. And you can rotate it around nine degrees. Cool, and we can just add it to the printer. Print. Print. So you can see it slices pretty quick and then sends it across. Um, not too bad. So it's it's a sleeker, sleeker interface. Still no proper G-code preview, but it does give you the estimate, so 44 minutes on the old up box. Oh, and also quite a few of you pointed out quite correctly that the up box does have a light that stays on. I completely forgot which button it was, so that was rather embarrassing. My light uh, LT4 from Blitzwolf rechargeable light video. So just to let you, sh let you see here, out of these buttons, it is this one here. So when you press that one, the light inside will stay on. All right, well, let's check on the printers in the workshop, shall we? Okay, so this is the workshop where there is no more room at all because it's full of machines. So I'm working on the i3s at the moment. Uh, let's start here with the uh, the Cocoon Create, shall we? So this is the trusty Cocoon Create. Oh, there's my lens cap. Handy. Um, and I do a lot of my, well, most of my PLA printing on this machine at the moment. I'm still running the Flexion Extruder, and I'm still running the Print and Z plates. They're not called Zebra plates anymore, they're just called Print and Z plates. But uh, as you can see, it's just a killer combination. Um, and what I'm printing at the moment is, uh, yeah, super cool and secret, and a really awesome collaboration that I'm looking forward to telling you guys about very soon. But that's testing it out at the moment. And here I have here the M150 so this is the Hobby King M150 or the Malian M150 the Hobby King selling that's the one uh, and it did have a few issues early on with the the belt idler on the the y-axis and this is a this is actually a documented problem a few people have had this where it um, sort of jams up but I've got that all fixed and it works pretty well uh, just need to get get a few more prints off it been doing some test prints you know my torch test Works pretty well. Need to dial the settings in to make sure you know these the stringing isn't the printer; it's the filament, uh, or just the temperature being too high, that kind of thing. But yeah, it seems to print pretty well. It's essentially a, a Wanhao i3 cloned. So I'm going to compare that to 
the original Wan Hao i3 when I do my comparison. Which brings us to this. This is my original Wan Hao duplicator i3, which you probably haven't seen for a long time. Indeed, it's been in a box stuffed away for about four months. And the reason I brought it back to life is to test out this setup, which is the BPS, um, the BPS extruder from Bill's Prototyping Studios in Australia. So, yes, please ignore the horrible wire mess. It is a nightmare. I just needed to make sure it will work. And the issue I'm having at the moment is it's got the the extruded gear is a different size than the original, so it's currently printing at completely the wrong settings. I need to get into the firmware and change all of that. And wow, the amount of fun I've had trying to change the firmware on this. I found Jet Guy's custom firmware for the i3, which is awesome. Jet Guy knows his stuff. But I tried to flash it to the this machine. Well, I, no, I tried to verify it in Arduino actually, and it came up with lots of errors. I looked up. Apparently the latest IDs uh, throw up these errors and then there's workarounds around it. I just don't have time to troubleshoot every step. I just need to get these machines going. I mean, you see how many I need to test to do reviews on. So at the moment, it's literally, it was easier to just get the plug and jam it in backwards for the step motor instead of going to firmware to reverse the step motor for the extruder. And I need to change the, the steps per millimeter for the extruder to make it print properly. But at the moment, it is working. It's pretty ugly, it needs a new fan mount for the BPS extruder to mount properly. You know, as you can see, it is it is just randomly jammed in there with zip ties. But it is a very nice extruder when you get behind all that awfulness I've done to it. And it is working quite well. So, Bill actually sent me quite a few different nozzles. So, if I go here, these are the, the nozzles he sent through. So, these are stainless steel and brass. And they go down to, I think, 0.3 all the way out to 0.5, which is cool, so I can test out some abrasive filaments. Ah, oh, cool, all right, well, yes, this is what I've been up to, it's taken ages, but as you guys know, just with one printer, the amount of tweaking and troubleshooting you have to do to get it going, I've got to do that on, like, five printers, and it's just constantly going around and around. Uh, oh, this is interesting as well, got a video coming up on um, different types of infills, so these are... An example of, you know, Simplify 3D's different types of infills, including the squiggle, which is just purely cosmetic, but looks pretty cool. Um, that video should be up on Tuesday, I believe. And yeah, thanks so much for guys for watching. I should be able to join you tomorrow for a regular Sunday stream. I'm not sure on time, probably 12 o'clock again. I can't do late, unfortunately, tomorrow. If you have not subscribed to Make Us Muse already, please consider doing so. We have just hit 25k, which is awesome, and I'm going to announce some really cool things very shortly on the channel. So thank you so much for guys watching, and I'll see you again very shortly here on Makers News. Catch you later.